Hi, I'm Matt and welcome back to the workshop. Today we're going to be talking about hand planes, specifically mid-priced hand planes. Uh, I'm going to look at some Axminster Rider and some Quang Sheng Luban planes and we're going to compare them because whilst they're both in the same price range, one brand is significantly better than the other. So, starting off with price, this is number 4 plane from Axminster and that was about 100 quid. Their number five is about a hundred and thirty pounds, I think. This is the Luban number five, and this was about hundred and thirty pounds from Rutland's, although it can be purchased from Workshop Heaven as well. And their number four, I think, is hundred and twenty pounds. So they're broadly similar in price. The Luban tends to be a little bit more expensive, but not by much. It's normally by one or two tens of pounds, not much. So, starting off with the Luban, I pulled this out of the box and I checked the sole and the sole was flat. Now, Workshop Heaven offer a lifetime guarantee on the Luban planes and they guarantee that their flatness is within British standards, which is plus or minus one and a half thousandths or a total of, uh, a total deviation of three thousandths, but one and a half thousandths either way. And I can very well believe that it was. I could get a 0.02mm feeler gauge under some parts of the sole. So that's one thousandth. I couldn't get a 0.04mm feeler gauge under any part of the sole whatsoever. And that is two thousandths. So it is well within British standards. And that was on a piece of float glass. So what did I have to do out of the box? I had to flatten the back of the blade which took about 30 seconds. And I will show you that. So the back of this blade isn't perfect, but then I'm using these tools all the time. So, so I don't know if you can see up here. We've got a very nice mirror finish that took about thirty seconds to get. Uh, there's some scratch marks that I haven't got rid of yet that I put in there. They weren't on it. Um, they're basically the intermediate grits between the, the polished grit and uh, the factory finish. So that took about 30 seconds, it took about another minute to hone the blade. And that was it, ready to go. The blade and the cap iron fit together very, very nicely. I didn't really have to do anything to that, although I did um, just polish the end here a little bit. And I put a I did put a little polish on the bottom of the cap iron, but it didn't need it at all. There was no gap. Uh, and that amount of preparation has been the same for all of my Luban planes. So, let's see how it performs, shall we? Now, what's nice to note about these Luban planes is they have a proper lever cap. And the advance and retard knob here, it's somewhere between three quarters of a turn and a turn between engaging. Right, these are, these planes have been sharpened, but the Luban I've got a nick in the blade that I haven't sharpened out, so... The shavings keep coming out split. That'll rectify itself once I've sharpened it to the point where that nick's gone now. Right, so this is a metric micrometer from Moore and Wright. And as you can see, well hopefully you can see that is 0.02 mil. That's a one one thousandth of an inch shaving. From a jack plane. Pretty good. Right, so, in fact, let me take this uh, blade out again. So I've mentioned the advance and retard. If you look at the face of the frog, it's really nicely machined. The lateral adjuster is a nice solid piece of metal. And the yoke is a one-piece yoke. 
So in addition to that, this is a bedrock plane, which means the mouth can be adjusted with the blading system. So looking closer again, handles, uh, really nice, I think it's Babinga, but it's a nice finish on there, there's no rough edges. The Japanin is pretty good, it's mostly smooth, there's a few pits and dimples here and there but not many and there's none of it flaking off. The machining on it is really nice um, on the, the sides and the sole and stuff like that, and I've got a lot of wax on here as well. So. But yeah, I didn't have to do anything to this out of the box, really, other than sharpen it and ready to go. Very nice plane. Now, as well as the frog being machined well, underneath the frog on the plane bed, that's also machined well, and I'll put a picture of that up now. Right, moving on to the Axminster Rider. About the same price. The castings are nice and heavy, but if you look at the Japanin, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but the Japanin is really heavily pitted and it's flaking off and all sorts of stuff. It's, it's really not good. And uh, that lack of quality runs throughout these planes. The advance and retard knob takes a couple of turns, so it's not as bad as something like a silver line where you turn it all day, but it's not as good as that. Part of that is because it has A split pressed steel yoke. Likewise, the lateral adjuster is pressed steel. I'll be doing for time. And if you look at the surface of the frog, it is machined flat ish, but it is nowhere near as good as where it's machined on the Luban. And I've had the frog off on this as well, and I will show you a picture of the machine under there now. How does that actually affect performance though? Well, that doesn't affect performance, but what does affect performance is the fact that the sole of this plane still isn't flat despite me spending four hours trying to flatten it and an hour trying to flatten the cupped blade and the bored cap iron. And that was the same with the spare blade, and it was also the same with the number 7. In addition to that, the spoke shaves and scrapers that I've got from Axminster all needed the beds flattening. The only plane that didn't was the small shoulder plane, and I think that that was just because I got lucky. With the lube bands, the amount of work that I had to do on that, which was just honing the blade and a very slight touch on the back of the blade, has been the same on the... Low angle block plane, the low angle rebate block plane, the 62 low angle jack, the large shoulder plane, didn't even have to have that done, I just needed honing. The only plane where from Luban where I've had to touch the sole is on the chisel plane, and that was just a light touch on the sole. Now adjusting this, because of that, the amount of slack in the knob at the back, it is harder to adjust than the low band planes. There we go. That's looking better. Right, so, I don't know if you can see that, if that will focus, but that is just under 0.02 millimetres, so a bit less than a thousandth of an inch. So both of these planes can take really fine shavings, they both leave a beautiful surface on the wood. They both cost about the same price, but the difference is that the Luban is much more of a family member to the Lee Nielsen's, whereas the Axminster Rider and much more of a family member to these horrible cheap 20 quid silver line planes. 
The amount of work it takes to get this working how it should work out of the box is ridiculous. I'm amazed that Axe Minister let these out of the factory with their name on it. Although, Axe Minister do advertise these as site carpentry tools where Luban advertise theirs as fine woodworking tools. And I would say that without putting the work in, that's very true. But on site, when are you going to use a number four smoother? You're doing timber framing and stuff like that. So a jack plane maybe, yes, but a number four smoother? I don't think so. I think Axminster have really dropped the ball with these planes, which is a shame to say because I've got some Axminster tools that are fantastic. But if I had my money again, I would not buy Axminster Rider planes personally. And in fact, I'm going to re be replacing this number four with a Luban plane. I'm not going to do it with the number seven because I don't use it enough to warrant it. And I've managed to get it flat enough to actually make a board flat. So. Without repeating myself, I think I should leave it there and uh, let you make up your own mind uh, on which of these mid-priced planes is really worth the money and which isn't. Let me know what you think in the comments. Thanks for watching and I shall see you later.